Sitting on a five-acre piece of land in the heart of the vast of Nakuru County with unlimited opportunities, Utamaduni Nature Park is a private-owned park majoring in the ecotourism that blends a taste of cultural diversities as well as wildlife. Here you have the ostrich. Ostrich is the biggest, the heaviest and the fastest bird on two. Mm -hmm. This bird has two toes, unlike other birds they have three or four, meaning this one helps the ostrich to for good tracking when it's running. It can, up, it can sprint up to 70 km per hour. It is the heaviest, weighing 120 to 150 kgs. It is the tallest, almost 2.3 meters, and has a very big eye, almost two inches. The eye actually is bigger than its brain. The ostrich normally uses height to spot the enemy from far, and it can be able to turn most because it's the fastest bird. The ostrich is kept for meat, for eggs, and also you can train it to take it on its back. Okay, traditional men normally used to go for the feathers of the ostrich to make traditional attire. Here we have the African lock python. Python is one of the biggest snakes in Africa. It is called constrictor because they normally kill by constriction. And we normally feed them maybe with rabbits or small, maybe small antelope. In the jungle they can feed on small antelope. These snakes are non-venomous, although they have teeth, the upper jaw they have four, and the lower jaw they have two, which are hooked inward to help in gripping or to get the prey. And they normally squeeze out the life of an animal, then they swallow, and it can take one or two months before it fully digests the swallowed prey. So we normally feed them once per month because they, they have a low metabolic rate. Python is produced also by laying egg, in which they hatch after 60 to 80 days. And during that period, the snake does not go feeding. It's normally coiled around the egg to provide security. They are also believed maybe to have killed human beings in rare occasions. Here we have an owl. We call it spotted eagle owl. It's a nocturnal bird, active during the night. During the day, it has poor vision have very tufted ears with sharp sense of hearing. It is a bird of prey with hooked beak and sharp talons. And the owl has the ability to, to spin the head almost to 70 degrees. Reason, it has 14 vertebrae or 14 bones around the neck. It is mostly associated with bad omen, although that is not a good belief. That one has made the bird be exterminated or be killed by human beings, although it's a very nice creature. And need to be conserved. The park has different cultural homesteads based on some of the Kenyan tribes with the inclusion of the Boranas, of which we will get to it in a moment. So welcome to Tamaduni. Tamaduni is famous for construction of this traditional homestead, reflecting the cultural culture of various communities. We have started with Kikui homestead, Kikui representing the central Bantus. We have the uh, Embu and Meru, and you, as you can see, they were making houses, um, a homestead using the grass, latching using the grass, but first they were, first were using the fan plant as the first layer, then they put more layers of the, of the grass. The fan plant normally helped cure the grass. It makes the grass to have free movement of air, so hence the grass will not rot. Then it was a taboo. For any reason to fall from the roof, it signifies that the, the rooftop was rotting, and then the only medicine was to 
to bring it down, then to do another structure. If you can see, the first wife heart is quite bigger than the others. This is called Nyakiambi. Mm -hmm. yeah? Nyakiambi. Yes. Uh, as you can see, underneath, we have the front of a hang. Chikuwa na sama agedaku. Underneath, they have structure, that small structure called Kefasha. Kefasha is a structure made under the front of a hang, or underneath the agedaku. It was a place where they used to store the items that were deemed important for the woman, mm -hmm. but they could not fit in the entire hut. Example, maybe the pest and the mortar. We have the grading stone for softening the flour for the porridge. Mm -hmm. If you get inside there, there's a small corridor, more or less a corridor, it's called Quero, or the white place. It is called white place because it was being, uh, it was being cleaned there using the ash because that place where the boys used to sleep together with the goats. And the way the Kikuyu were spending much, they were keeping the goats in the, in the hut was to help in curing or killing the jiggers. Because the alkaline in the urine of the goat used to kill the jiggers. Inside there, there's a small fattening pen. They call it Gishego in Kikuyu. That's the place where the woman used to fatten the, the ram. And that ram did not go for grazing. It was being fed inside there by the woman. And the woman was being known to be hardworking, Kanamutu Miyagada, through fattening of the, the ram. If you get inside, we have the cooking place with the stones. The stone almost maybe signifying the, the nuclear family, father, mother, and children. And the two stones, one representing the god, they called him Kirodo, another one the father. And they were made, they were being permanent. And that one representing the mother and the children was being adjusted depending on the, on the pot that we were using to cook. Over the cooking place, we have the firewood rack, or itara, where they used to keep excess firewood. Then we have the cooking stick. The cooking stick is called what? Mindori in Kikuyu. Then we have the traditional cupboard, where they used to store food. We call it degi in Kikuyu. Degi, that's where the woman could keep the, the guards, could keep the food. And a mataha. mataha is the irio made by smashing the potatoes and so on. We have the bed for the woman, we call it orere, and the bed for the girls, we call it kirere. Orere, kirere. Yes, kirere for the girls, orere for the woman. Okay. If you look, we have now the father's hut. It's quite smaller than the, that of the woman. Maybe because the father does not have so many activities in the hut, other than the woman. And you can see, we have a spike on top of the hut and it was being chopped when the, when the father dies. Okay? The absence of the spike signifies the, the demise of the, of the father. We have the bed, we have the circular seat, we call it Jungwa for them there, and them there door, we call it Rige. 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 Then we have the boys' hut, that's where the boys used to spread, those who are circumcised, but circumcision took place in the, in the forest where they make temporary homestead, we call them Izono. And the same, the Izono were being used by the sick people. If you, are, you got sick by those times, you are being quarantined or taken to the forest until you become well. If you don't, they leave you to die there. And the same Izono are being made for the, for the in-sheet or for the boys to get circumcised. But when they get well, they come and spread their time in the, the hut. Then you have the secondary hut, and we have the granary. We can see Kikuyu, we are famous. Yeah. So that's why you see each and every woman had her own granite. In our wild tour, we will get to interact with a tour guide of the Utamaduni Nature Park who is making a remarkable progress in conserving and preserving the diverse Kenyan culture. He will be telling us more about the unique scenery. Hi guys, welcome to the Breakout Show and I am still your host Ule Moja Tumwenye Unajuanga Judy Njunge. Well today we told you we will be somewhere special, Ali Hapa Utamaduni. And today I have a wonderful person who will be speaking to us and giving us facts. Napia, some one to threes kwa tourism. So karibu sana. Santi. So tukianza, first things first. Was this your passion from beginning? Yes, it was my passion. Um, 
mkiwa um, mtoto ama mpaka ama ulikiwa mkubwa ulifika mahali ndio ikakuja ilikuja when i was school uh-huh. wakati ni join uh, conservation club environmental clubs uh-huh. ndio nikakuwa motivated kufanya kitu related na wildlife conservation all environmental education mostly ni kafol to do tourism and wildlife management and how has been the journey ya kufanya tourism and you know doing your dream yeah it has not been easy because i started the year 2002 wakati ni join wildlife club of kenya i'm a city center for tourism training and research nikafanya tour guiding then nikafanya diploma in wildlife management um okay tunaona you have the ideology ya kila kitu you have the tumeona nyumba za every tribe you know such and animals is vitu mnafunzwa ama ni wewe ujitafutie mwenyewe ujue how do you get this ideas za kujua hizi vitu zote one when you are doing tourism it's a wide thing because we have the insight come on fanya to guiding una trainwa kuhusu cultural tourism so you get to understand the the tribes that we have in Kenya their lifestyle and then watakufunza maneno ya wanyama ama maneno pia miti what is your favorite ni tribe gani favorite kwako mine maybe naweza kuwa biased because I'm a kikuyu who has some sana napendelea sana sana to speak about my tribe ni kwa nini mm i'm more conversant with it uh-huh. although i can be able also to explain uh-huh. other tribes but mostly when i flow is when it speak it in your mother tongue ah, very nice and uh kuna kuna this utamaduni yes. have you ever worked in other places uh before ukuje kwa utamaduni yes i did my attachment at esamia conservation center mm-hmm. then i had a chance to work at like kitchen nature conservancy one of the biggest i'm the largest privately owned conservancy in kenya mm-hmm. like kitchen nature conservancy mm-hmm. then after that kwa kuwa na post election violence the tourism did not fare well on so i did join i, I worked at uh, Nairobi uh, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. <laughs> hey, airport. Yes. <laughs> hey, airport. Mm-hmm. What eh uh, you feeling ilikuwa you don't feel or you know unafanya kazi mm. airport. It's just normal, just uh-huh. like in any other place but uh-huh. your main focus we kwa tu bado na unaona one day utarudi kwa tourism. Mhm. Uh-huh. And how has been your experience kufanya kazi huko compared to hapa? Maybe pale kuna watu wengi. Uh-huh. You keep on meeting new people na tena transport iko a little bit much busy than here so you are staying there wakati ulikuwa unafanya uko kazi yes niko na kana robi that is very interesting and um kikuja kwa wanyama i see that kuna wanyama wengi sana and hao oh, wanyama mnawapata wapi do you rescue them from uko kwa game reserves ama mna buy from from other parks There are those ones that have been bought uh-huh. from other areas like the crocodiles uh-huh. and the ostrich but the others have been rescued from the neighboring community. Ah. Mm-hmm. And kuna kuna time period yenye wanafaa kukaa hapa. Paka wakifika ama ni mpaka wakufe mnawazika then you bring others. Kuna time mm-hmm. period yenye wanafaa kukaa. There are those animals uh-huh. maybe wajafika hiyo time ya breeding uh-huh. like the crocodile. Uh-huh. But when come watafanya breeding hapa tutakuwa na ile namba tutakuwa recommended by the Kenya Dog Service depend the size depend the the area and then watatuambia the maximum number we can be able to keep mm-hmm. so we can still get the the advice from them then tunaweza pauza ama tutajua kufanya and unajua kazi hii ni dangerous sana juu nimeona kuna nyoka kwa cage lazima muingie team change maji mm-hmm. crocodile anapewa chakula unafanyanga aje hiyo kazi hamu kupei maisha yenu mume sign insurance mm-hmm. kuna kitu mnakuwa mmeweka ndio kitu mbaya kifanyika yani unaambiwa ni wewe na ni wewe ama ni company no it depends on your on your ability to know the ecology of the animal mm-hmm. you know the animal behavior mm-hmm. which time are they active how do they behave like the crocodile i can search in the water because one the crocodile they keep distance you know they are ambush hunters mm. they can't chase you around like dogs and there's maybe you move too close to them that when they can be able to inflict injury but if you keep a distance they cannot use the hammer as you go 
So guys, you've had it. <laughs> mimi, hiyo mimi siwezi. And if you love your life and this is what you wanna do, well, passion is the best thing kwanzia nayo. Don't go too far, we'll be right back after this short break. This is The Breakout Show. Usikuto yu mimi. So this is another fascinating tribe. We call them Teso. A Teso originated from the southern part of Uganda and they have settled in the western part of the country. If you can see, they have a very interesting and textured design. They have done it in steric, unlike this flat. These guys do not have bed, they are sleeping on the ground, but the ground is raised a little bit to avoid flooding. As you can see, the granary is centrally positioned, meaning that they used to share food among the wives. In Kikuyu tribe, we have seen each and every woman had her own granary. And then you can see the fathers and the boys' hearts are toward the gate to provide security. <laughs> 